In this video, I'll be adding a complex ocean system with different weather, rock splashes, swimming and much more to my exploration game. First I had to decide which method I want to use to make these waves. There's the old method of scrolling textures, which is outdated and looks bad, FFT waves, which are incredibly complex, and Gerstner waves. I quickly decided to go for Gerstner waves. They basically combine a bunch of simple sine waves to create complex looking waves. The more waves, the more expensive the calculation will be. I won't go into Gerstner waves too much in this video, but there's a great video by Gislain Girardo, which I will link in the description. I'll add lakes later, but first the ocean. This is a plane I made in Blender, which gradually gets less detailed from the center. Since the waves are world space, I can simply move this mesh with the player and it'll look like the player is exploring an infinite ocean. The far waves aren't Gerstner waves, but simply scrolling normal textures. So it is also completely flat, but since the player will never get close to them, it doesn't matter. Something else I did was make the peaks of the waves a slightly lighter color. This is to fake the light shining through the peaks. Now there's another problem. I want to use this ocean height data in a lot of different places and doing the calculation so many times is expensive. So instead of doing that, I'll render it to a render target. Anything, anywhere in the world can then sample this render target to get the wave data, which is really cheap. Here you can see an example of some lily pads deforming to the ocean using the render target. One big downside of this is that I can't use rotation. So these buoys for example don't look very good. Then I integrated the water system with the weather system so I can generate different waves in stormy weather. When it's stormy I made the waves higher and sharper, added foam and made a Niagara particle effect for splashes on top of the waves. To do this I wrote a Niagara scratch pad module which is the same as the lily pads. Sample the wave position, then using that data I immediately destroyed all the splashes on low waves and added velocity to the remaining particles. I made a small blueprint using mostly the same system so I can create splashes on rocks and stuff. Time to get started on the water. First I made a light function for the sun and moon that creates fake toss sticks below the waves using a few scrolling textures. Of course, you can't see as far underwater as above water, so I made a fog volume that changes color depending on the depth. Something I really wanted was those god rays you get when the sun shines through the waves. First I tried using a light function, but as I thought those don't affect volumetric shadows. Then I tried using an invisible plane with holes in it to cast shadows. This creates nice looking god rays, but creates awful shadows. So in the end I decided to fake it in the fog material. I take a noise texture and stretch this in the direction of the light. Using this I brighten the fog to make it look like there are god rays. Finally I fade this out over a certain depth. This looks pretty okay but it should be more blue. So let's add a post process material. I made it so the image gets more blue the further you look and the color also changes depending on the depth. So in shallow waters you'll still be able to see a lot of colors but deeper down it's more just blue. I did this because in real life blue is the color the water absorbs least, so it looks blue. But the deeper you go the more water the sunlight needs to go through so the less you will be able to see other colors. One of the most annoying parts of the whole system is the screen space waterline detection and which parts should have underwater post processing. I tried a bunch of different methods and what I ended up doing was making this mesh which has the same grid density as the ocean and having a scene capture camera render this to a render target. Then I can use this render target as a screen space underwater mask. This solution isn't perfect, but it's the best I could come up with. This looks good, but the problem is that it's all shader code. So it's being calculated on the GPU, which means I can't access the wave height data in normal code. To fix this, I made the exact same Gerstner wave calculation with the same parameters in the normal code. So now I can get the wave height data and use this to create a buoyancy system with real physics and rotation. I'm also using this for the swimming system. I wasn't sure if I should use the crawl or breaststroke as the crawl is faster on the surface but not underwater. So I ended up making both and having the player switch strokes if they're underwater. If the player is on the surface they will stay on the surface and go up and down with the waves until the player swims down. Sound is also very important, so I divided the effects up into two classes, above water and underwater. This way I can add reverb to the above water sounds if the player is underwater.
Finally, for the gameplay side of things, I made a post-process effect for when the player is running out of breath. As you can see, the screen starts to get darker, color starts to fade away, and if you are almost out of breath, the screen gets a little blurry. I also made it sound like you are walking through water. And the player will take deeper breaths if they were almost out of breath. Only a few things left. First, I really want air pockets. So when the player is exploring a shipwreck or cave, they can find air pockets and breathe for a while. Luckily this wasn't that complex. I've got a few volumes that indicate when the player is near an air pocket, and since they don't have to have waves, I didn't need to do anything with Gershner waves. Just some small normal map ripples. This system of course also works with any buoyancy actor, like items. And the final big thing I wanted to add is lakes. These are a bit different from the ocean as they don't move with the player and instead use a grid system. As you can see there are three LODs. By the third LOD the displacement has faded out. But for the first two you can see that the edge vertices connect, so there are never gaps between the planes due to displacement. Another problem was when a lake goes below the height of the ocean. As I explained previously, the ocean moves with the player, so you would see the ocean surface below the lake. Luckily, I found a pretty simple solution to this. If the player camera is in a lake, then the ocean moves down and out of the way. I wasn't sure if this would work, but I haven't had any issues with it. And last of all, I added some fake bubbles. These may look 3D, but they're actually just 2D planes with shading off to improve performance. Now that just about all the different aspects of the game are working, the next step will be to combine them and make the first island. If this project interests you, consider wishlisting on Steam or subscribe. Bye.